All right. <laughs> Hello, people. Why not? Um, today we're going to be taking a look at the final um, trilogy, I guess. Um, here's up how you describe it. Part three of a uh, trilogy from Game Theory. <laughs> um, Gaster's identity revealed. Now, if you've seen my previous um, reaction slash review to part two of this, I was not too sure how I felt about the theory. Part one seemed good enough, right? And then, like, part two, I'm like, uh, there's a little hole in this theory, but let's see how, um, MathPad kind of goes about part three and whatnot. Um, I will be pausing through this and everything. Um, <laughs> I'll put the link to the original video in the description, and, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, and of course, as well, um, for those who are new, I do videos on Undertale-related stuff, whether it is reactions, um, reviews, and playing the games slash fan games. Um, I'll also be getting into Deltarune as well. So, we, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Gaster, a man who speaks in hands in the royal scientist before Alphys, only known about through his four followers, only appear in certain timelines of the game. With him being shattered across time and space, he must share some connection with the other two characters that seemingly straddle time and space, Flowey and Sans, and uh -huh. indeed he does in the form of his Gaster Blaster. Entry set. Yeah, so already, like, right there, right? Um, which, I mean, of course, like, you know, this is the assumption that, like, um, Flowey's thing is, um, a Gaster Blaster, which that I can more believe, right? That, that makes more, more sense within, um, his theory so far, or, like, what he, what he was already talking about previously. Um... But it, it was like kind of the other stuff about like um oh, what was it I can't uh, oh yeah about like um but about Sans's goal I think mean, like right like about bringing back Gaster but at the same time like Sans and Papyrus both being like parts of Gaster and I I've seen this video before it's been a while since I've seen it um so I remember some things about it some of it's returning back to mind <laughs> if you will. <laughs> Okay, let's continue though. 17. It says the following. Dark, darker, yet darker. The shadows cutting deeper. Photon readings negative. This next experiment seems very, very interesting. Interesting inside. Based on the Gaster follower dialogue, he fell into, quote, his creation. Gaster himself fused his body with excessive amounts of determination. W. Alrighty. Gaster is Sans. W.D. Gaster is also Papyrus. Papyrus? How could he, the great Papyrus, <laughs> be wrapped up in all of this? Game theory and a part three of the Who is Gaster trilogy. Last time I left you with an absurd thing <sighs> that Sans and Papyrus are the two halves of Gaster's fractured brain. It is. Um, okay. Huh. Uh, I, I. I don't know about that. Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right, okay. Look, 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 look. Do I think that there is a connection? Yes, I do. Could they potentially be parts of Gaster? Maybe, but don't we already have proof that there are more than just Sans and Papyrus as representations of Gaster, though? And. Let me continue, let's continue, let's continue. Right, 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 right. We're here, you know, let, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Without question, one of the most extreme claims that I've ever made in the history of this show. And I have claimed that the FNAF story has been wrapped up like no less than five times. So, oh boy. Oh, no. so far I'd say I've done a fairly good job of covering the literal butt ton of information on how Sans fits into all this. His connection with the true lab, his knowledge yeah, of right. time and space, his desire to go back, his seraph laden font that appears when he falls asleep, his theme song's connection with Gone. Kid, the Gaster Blasters, the secret room behind his house, the Gorgon, <laughs> nowhere to assert themselves, Sans is a rational hatred towards humans, the whole Shire is two halves to create a single entity thing, all of that. Oh yeah, I guess there's a good point about like the whole thing about like Sans like um, being really set on like the whole um, like killing the um, human immediately kind of thing. That is interesting and I'm not too sure the reason why. Like it was very intimidating, right? <laughs> but why though, right? And it creates like that level of interest. Maybe it was already expressed in like other parts I'm just not aware of, but yeah. <laughs> Do you see now why this had to be in 
three parts, and that's only a portion of everything that we've covered. But today, it's time to get scientific with the Skelebrones. Because when you stop and look at some of the weird details that Toby Fox included about these two characters, you start to realize that their connection goes much deeper than just being mere brothers. <laughs> oh, and I'm yeah. not done. We're I do remember some of this, so I'm already kind of remembering it. The fact that Papyrus isn't nearly as naive as he lets on. Sure, he may hmm. play innocent enough, but behind that basketball oh, shoulder Papyrus. pad spaghetti love and Starman pose and cool dude facade is someone who is deep with Sans and Alfie's and the Gaster experiments. These three game theories are a trilogy bigger than Mass Effect, and hopefully with a more satisfying ending. Star children, really? Go home, Bioware. You're drunk. And don't you dare. Don't Aww. you dare for a second make Mass Effect Andromeda your slot. I, I don't know about Come this. Out Mars, <laughs> you barely see anything about it? I am concerned. So I promised you science, and doggone it, we're going to start with science. Specifically, the neuroscience of Undertale. Now, I'm pretty sure that you've probably heard the old adage by now that the two halves of the brain yep. handle different parts of human functioning. The left is analytical, and the right is creative. Now, while this may not be a hundred percent scientifically accurate it does have some basis in scientific reality in the late 1960s a man named roger sperry wanted to explore the extent oh, which some the history halves of the human brain could function independently to do this he took some volunteers and severed their corpus callosum aka the nerve fibers oh. that carry signals between the two halves of the oh. brain and that ladies and gentlemen is why you got to read the fine print when you sell your body to science oh hey i'm just a college student in need of some extra date money cindy and women's studies She's pretty cute. Welcome to the experiment, kid. We're cutting your brain in two. Gee willikers, scientist. That sounds dangerous. Ah, those nerves aren't important. Here's 20 bucks. Nighty night. Now, where's my Nobel Prize? Okay, but oh, in all no. seriousness, this guy wasn't just hacking away at McNugget. <laughs> oh, no. In the olden days of the 60s, this is actually how they cured extreme cases of epilepsy. By dividing oh. the brains right down the middle. And although the patients were able to live normal lives, every so often, a strange functional gap would start to pop up. Not being able to identify some Thing that they saw, having trouble with a word, perceiving something on one side of the body but not on the other. So Sperry studied these perceptual gaps and confirmed okay. that the two halves of the brain are indeed specialized in specific functions. The left brain is the verbal and logical center. It can break down numbers and words and analyze situations. Conversely, the right brain is the nonverbal and intuitive center. It okay, okay. So, okay, so we're getting more historical in, in that whole regard. Not just historical, but also scientifically. Um, as far as, like, what I can really say about this, not really much. <laughs> uh, but, um, I already kind of know where he's going with this as far as, like, it relating to, like, Sans and Papyrus specifically. But, I mean, hey, like, the, 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 um, the, the, the things that he's kind of talking about. I mean, it's some interesting stuff, though. You know, getting into, like, on the different parts of the brain and, like, what its specific functions are. Um, and they're, like, kind of sort of roles, if you will. So, very nice. Thinks in pictures or patterns. It's involved when you're making a map or giving directions, but can only produce rudimentary words and phrases. However, it contributes the emotional context to language. In the words of Sperry himself, the great pleasure and feeling in my right brain is more than my left brain can find the words to tell you. Get it? Because the right brain <laughs> is feeling, but the left brain is the one who does all the talking. Anyway, it'll all make sense when we look at how this applies to Gaster and the two Skelebros. Papyrus dreams big. He wants to capture humans to impress Undyne and wants to join the royal guard. Hey. The fears in his world are whimsical. He likes japes and gags and even wears a caped costume at all times. Sans also mentions that Papyrus gets cranky without a bedtime story. He wears his emotions on his Starman inspired sleeve, becoming flustered if the player even hints at flirting with him. Basically, Papyrus seems very emotionally driven. He's very yeah, much I mean, the yeah. right brain. Sans, on the other hand, seems a lot more analytical and logical than his brother. He's very sarcastic, dry, witty, clever. At times, it's difficult to tell if he's being serious or very, very threatening. He's also <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my God! The the scene with um with Sans, like um when you um uh eat at that restaurant and whatnot. Um, not Grill Beast, the other one. <laughs> near um, Metaton's place. <laughs> he gets real serious there. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
extremely intelligent. But Papyrus takes a little bit of time to figure out that the player is human. Sans sees it immediately. And in Genocide Run, Sans sees through the player's facade for the monster that they are. He even <gasps> asks them to continue pretending to be a human for Papyrus's sake. Sans, for all his joking, is very <coughs> logical, interested in science and the time-space continuum, driven by reasoning. He's the left brain. And sure, those surface connections are all well and good, but I wouldn't be making this claim if it didn't go a whole lot deeper. So let's take a look at Skelebro's puzzle section in Snowden. Throughout this iconic section of the game, Papyrus and Sans present you with various challenges to block your progress. Papyrus's challenges are all spatially focused, doing things like forcing you to map out a walking path so as not to step on the same switch. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> puzzles that require the right brain. I need to I need I need, I need to definitely like um go back to Wondertale. Presents you with the Monster Kids word search, a language-based task is one specifically oriented from the left brain. So are the left and right halves of your mind blown yet? Well, if not, it keeps going. One detail I always thought was weird was the game going out of its way to tell you which type of puzzle in the newspaper the two brothers find more difficult. Sans insists that the word search is harder, but Papyrus thinks that the word jumble is harder. Huh. The word jumble involves taking a series of letters, breaking them down, and rearranging them to find the words that's made of those letters. It makes sense then that Papyrus, as the right brain, would find it more difficult. It's about forming words, a specifically language-based process. And why All right. Sans, as the left brain, would find it easier. On the other hand, a word search, while still a left brain activity, involves identifying already existing words within a giant collage of letters. Since it's just identifying patterns of existing letters, it would make sense why the creative pattern-based papyrus would find that easier, and why Sans would think it's a bit harder than the jumble. It's crazy, right, how these details line up. But if that's still... That is okay. All right, okay. That is definitely a cool um thing to be found from there. That level of um uh separation, if you will, when it comes to that. Now, <clears throat> he does bring up that these are both um like left brain sort of things, if you will. So it's like that. That's there. There is a way to kind of take it out of that to where you can get that sort of um analysis of that. As far as it being like what Toby Fox was initially planning on being the case with the puzzles um uh it's 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 possible uh, when it comes to that uh well let's continue i'm still not it's it's so tough right because it's like a part of me is like yeah that that that's possible but then at the same time like but <laughs> it's like are we sure though so it's like I, i'm kind of like stuck between Fully, like, because, like, with, with Sans and Papyrus, right, it's, like, it, it's almost, like, like yeah, like, it, it makes sense about them, like, being a part of Gaster, like, maybe, like, after Gaster, um, split himself across reality, Sans and Papyrus, um, were part of those things, you know, so that's, that's a possibility, um, I guess we'll, we'll just have to continue to see, I'm still not too sure, though. It wasn't enough. Even the humor of these two matches up with their appropriate brain hemisphere. Papyrus, as the right brain, would be much more prone to physical comedy. His so-called japes, Sam, <laughs> the nice. left brain and linguistic center, would get endless amounts of joy out of wordplay. Things like, say, bad puns. Oh, well, wouldn't you know? <laughs> That's why so many of them get such cringy joy out of my bad puns on Twitter. As theorists, most of us, myself included, are analytical left brains. So a witty turn of phrase will keep us raffle coptering for days. Then there's the true pacifist ending, where Papyrus doesn't know the word for sun, having to rely on Sans to tell him. Yet another language-based knowledge item, and yet another odd detail that gets explained away by the split brain theory. Uh, okay, that part now. <clears throat> um, that part, okay, that part's a little more of a, a stretch in my opinion, because like with, and <laughs> I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be fair with this though. Um, but with like, um, as far as like the the sun thing, I think that was more so like on the concept of like, how would Sans know that, right? I mean, granted though, I mean, no one else seems to be unaware of it being the sun, right? So I guess you could chalk that up to um, maybe Papyrus just not knowing more common knowledge in that regard. I mean, they do know about stars and stuff like that, and they like, right? Like they know about those, though. So they're like, of course, not like. Well, real stars, you know, 
Um, uh, I guess you could, because technically speaking, that is like again like a left center of the brain thing, like about like the fact that the sands would know just like this more so like scientific facts. So I guess you could still relate that. Yeah, I guess you could still relate that to that. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I can give that to Matt Pat. Partially. <laughs> <laughs> Even their handedness aligns. Sans greets the protagonist with a handshake using his left hand, holds and drinks a ketchup bottle with his left okay, yeah, hand. Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> pacifist credits and even manipulates gravity during the genocide boss battle with, you guessed it, his left huh. hand. Now, admittedly, we don't get to see Papyrus move quite as much, but he does scratch his chin with his right hand, an action you would be a lot more comfortable doing with your dominant side. And yes, a quick disclaimer, since I know it's going to appear in the comments, I know that that handedness is at least partially controlled by the opposite hemisphere of the brain, but I'm saying from a symbolic left-right perspective, oh, not a functional okay. one. But just like the slap chop guy, I'm still not done because if we want to dive into honestly, like he <laughs> starts to convince me. I know I just said earlier, but <laughs> wait. Oh no. I don't know. I I <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's Semantics. continue. We can even use the names of the skeletons to connect them even further. As we mentioned last episode, W.D. Gaster's name appears to be a combination of two different fonts, Wingdings and Aster. Wingdings is a completely silly font. It's a joke, nearly unreadable to anyone who doesn't know how to decode it. This lines up with the ridiculous scheming papyrus. Aster, oh, on the I would have thought that would have been more sans-like. Because even like, wait, wait. I would have thought that was more sand. Okay, wait, wait, let's continue, let's continue. This lines up All right. with Sans, who, despite his jokester appearance, is very serious underneath, casting judgment on you in the final minutes oh, of the true. game, holding down multiple jobs, having some Kinda. mysterious role in the determination experiment, being very focused into its research on the time-space continuum. So yeah, that's why I think the two halves of Gaster's mind are now embodied in the two Skelebrodes. When you actually take a step back and look at all the details that just fit into this theory, there's a lot of them. Their behavior fits unbelievably well. Their names and visual design are undeniably related. And in addition to everything else we've covered, the fact that the two brothers appeared out of nowhere and exist separately That's a good from the point. rest of the other monsters and underground that is, okay, is that is um really telling. But it does leave us with one last question. Why would Sans be aware of their origins while Papyrus isn't? Papyrus seems ignorant to everything in the secret lab behind the house and didn't even know that Sans and Alpheus had a history of working together. So why doesn't he have gaster blasters or any knowledge of the time space continuums anything like that well who's to say he doesn't for as innocent as he behaves he's in just as deep as sans the evidence doesn't pop up too often I, okay all right let's see let's see what you got let's see what you got yeah first Similar yeah. to Sans, he clearly knows about different timelines and the ability to manipulate actions across them. After going to some extreme lengths across different saves and reloads to convince Sans that you're a time traveler, he finally gives you a key to his room to reveal the truth. Go in and what you find will shock you. He tricks you into running on a treadmill. Funny, sure, but the real mind blow here is when Papyrus enters and asks, is Sans pranking you across time and space? I hate it when he does that. So oh, clearly he knows yeah, about Sans' wait. timeline hopping and isn't weirded out by it. Then, in the true pacifist ending, Papyrus exclaims that this is the worst ending since he's not a royal guard. <laughs> That's funny, but wait. What? Saying that this is the worst ending implies that he knows other endings are possible. Again, demonstrating a knowledge of different timelines. Yeah, okay, let's continue. Let's continue. For the rest of the game. And then what about his connection? I'm trying to really. Oh, okay, I'm trying to not be like so skeptical on it, but like um, with that part right there, I'm not too sure. I would say that I was like. This is the worst possible ending. Maybe more along the lines of like a uh, like a joke that that um, Toby Foss is kind of putting in there and kind of hinting to the fact that there are multiple endings. You know, it was kind of like a funny thing. It's like, oh, why? I'm not the I'm not part of the royal guard. This is the worst possible ending. What? Even though like, let's be real here now. <laughs> okay, it could get a lot worse in this one. So that's kind of how I would have more taken it. Not to downplay this. Um, sort of view when it comes to what that um, theory um, to what that dialogue means. Um, I guess both aren't mutually ex 
exclusive, maybe, I, whatever, <laughs> whatever with that, ignore me on that. Um, but like the previous one about like, um, you see, um, bring you on across time and space. I hate when he does that, that right there, that is, that is interesting. That right there is interesting. And I guess if you combine that with his dialogue of like, this is the worst possible ending, um, even though let's be real now, <laughs> okay, it does provide some level of credence to this theory. Gaster. Well, like Sans, he's also able to manipulate gravity, once again implying that they are two halves of the same whole. It's also worth noting that it's the only one of the soul modes that actually manipulates a spatial law. Green gives you a shield, yellow is had by pressing a button, and purple is a bunch of spider webs, but blue changes gravity. It's no small feat, but it goes beyond that. In one of the patches to the game, if you stop a genocide run by sparing Papyrus, he says that it's good you stopped when it did. If you hadn't, he would have had to use his special attack and that the player would have been quote blasted he then quickly Ooh. changed the subject but it's an odd choice of words right gaster blaster nice okay the special attack is not changing the heart to blue because he starts referencing the special attack after turning the heart blue and it's also not the giant bone that he uses to end the battle since the annoying dog steals the special attack and he winds up having to use a normal attack which features that giant bone. It's also important to note that this odd detail was included in a patch to the game, especially when other details added during those exact same patches were making Gaster a more official part of the game experience. You no longer had to hack into the game's fun value in order to experience Gaster as a real part of the game's lore. Given all of those details, I think it's less likely that Toby Fox was strongly hinting at us to believe that Papyrus also has access to Gaster Blaster. Yeah, that I do. Yeah, that I can agree with. That I can definitely agree with. Everything in three episodes that I could piece together about how all these characters connect. And when I stopped and looked at all this evidence to write these episodes, the most sensible conclusion was one that I initially thought was absolutely absurd. That Sans and Papyrus are two halves of the Gaster whole. It was quite honestly the neuroscience bit and the fact that they appeared out of nowhere that sold me on it were they created when gaster fell into his machine or were they present throughout the whole series of experiments it's not really clear i'd personally like to think the former but the pictures in sans's laboratory of three smiling faces with the quote never forget seems to imply the latter oh that part i oh my god oh. Man, this stuff guys can get you excited for Delta Red, okay? Now this of course if I'm I'm not sure this is made um fifteen. When did hold on, let me look it up. When did Delta Red first come out? Hold on. No no. When did looking it up on my phone, let me see when did Delta Red Chapter One release? Okay, twenty eighteen. Okay, so yeah, this was before Delta Rune. Uh was great, okay. Probably would have mentioned Delta and stuff in this theory if if it was out by here. Um, but yeah, this right here, <laughs> three smiling people, that that makes you interested and whatnot. Either way, this don't forget. And the theory ends because, as Toby Fox himself confirmed on Twitter, "quote You've all seen the happiest outcome. Neither of them could fix the machine, no matter how hard they tried." No one can. Neither of them being the operative Ooh. word there because it means not just Sans, but both the brothers were involved Ooh. in trying to fix the machine. Oh, the man. Never forget on that picture because they don't want to end up like Goner Kid or what Azrael warned them about. That by resetting the timeline over and over again, the memories start to fade from existence. They can't let themselves forget Gaster or their former origins, even though they'll never be able to bring him back or get their normal lives back, no matter how hard they try. It gives this game, even in the happiest, true pacifist ending, a new layer of tragedy, a new depth of story that is hidden to almost 82% of the game's players. It just shows how much care and love went into crafting this plotline and gives testament to why everyone loves this game's story so very much. But hey, All that's right. just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Alright, okay, so this one, I, I like this one more. I do like this one more. Um, huh, no, man, 
that was actually pretty good. Now, as far as it relating to the other points that he had stated in his previous theory, um, it does allow some level of credence, but then, like, it kind of makes a little more, um, um, iffy when it comes to, like, some things. However, um, this wasn't too bad. This actually wasn't bad, actually. Um, so what do you all think of this, um, theory and everything? So let me know about that. As far as, like, what I think about this, um, about them being, like, um, parts of, of Gaster, right? Um, I, I partially think back to, like, um, this fan, um, AU comic called, um, or AU, Undertale AU comic called, um, Hand Plates. Um, dark, <laughs> dark, um, story. They have a, um, well, they, there is rather a comic dub of it and whatnot. Um, but yeah, pretty dark, pretty dark stuff. Um, but it, when it, as far as like the whole thing of like, you know, like being a part of Gaster, um, they do kind of tackle that a little bit. And I won't spoil a lot of it, okay? I'm not gonna like spoil much on it, um, on hand plates if you haven't seen it, but. It does tackle that sort of concept, not directly for them being like his brain, if you will, but um, it, it's interesting, right? It, it's very interesting about how, um, about like Sans, Papyrus, and Gaster and everything, and um, the fact that Papyrus does say like blasted does give credence to the idea of, of him having a Gaster blaster. But as well, you know, like, with back to, like, the whole Gaster thing, with them not, with them being Gaster, right? I mean, unless you, we were to argue that, like, they are Gaster, but then there's still, like, other pieces of him, maybe? Um, let me know what y'all guys think, ultimately, about this. Um, and it'd be great if you guys could check out my other videos. I do a lot of Undertale-related content and whatnot. Um, and yeah... Um, let me know if you guys want me to react to, um, next, um, and wait, or even, like, what you guys want me to review next, or maybe ideas on what I could review. Like, review topics with you, sorry, bad words, um, in this case, um, or, like, um, what fan game, um, I could play. Uh, let me know. But, yeah, thank you all for watching, until next time. Till next time. Bye bye.